going to be doing today is changing the timing belt and the oil pump on my Discovery 3. Now, there are a number of videos kicking about on YouTube um, showing you how to do this job, and they're generally done by people who have uh, done it before, let's say. So, I'm not a mechanic, I'm quite mechanically minded, and uh, basically I'll tackle anything. So, I'll make this video, and I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. I'll, uh, I'll show you steps as I'm going along. Um, obviously there'll be a few blank spots um, where I have to get in about it myself and not be able to hold a camera at the same time. So, first things first, I'm going to get the vehicle jacked up and make a start on getting the, the starter off. Obviously before I take the starter off, I'm going to have to disconnect the battery. So we'll start with that. Now, I just thought I'd show you under the bonnet uh, before I start. As you can see with most modern vehicles these days, everything is covered in plastic covers. And you hardly get a fag paper down the side of it. So, uh, we'll start by removing some covers and then I'll take the battery off and I'll join you again. Okay, if you're like me, you have a garage like this. A bit of a bomb site. So, it's always good when you're working on a, on a vehicle is to uh, have a nice wee box just to put everything in. It keeps everything tidy and stops you losing bits and pieces, so I uh, really recommend that. Okay, that's just the uh, air intake hose and the, the engine cover taken off. The one little tip here, you've got that air intake there. It's very advisable to stuff a rag in there while you're working, see if you're dropping anything down it. Another little tip is uh, when you take your nuts and bolts off, don't be tempted to set them on the, on the bonnet landing panel. But as I've just done, I've just knocked a couple down there. This off before when I changed the altimeter, so I know it's going to come off. It is a left-handed thread, so it's fan out of the way, unplugged and removed. Um, it's always a good idea to take a photo or draw a little diagram of where your belts go. You usually find it a little long ago one way anyway, but uh, it makes life a bit, a bit simpler if you uh, take the time to have draw a wee dry diagram. Okay. Okay, the thing I'm going to start doing now is removing all the uh, all the cooling hoses. You will lose fluid here, but um, don't worry about it, it's uh, easily replaced. We'll make a start on that now. Okay, that's some of the hoses removed now. As you'll see, I haven't actually removed them completely. They can be disconnected on one side and just pushed over out of the way. It saves you getting things mixed up. There's also a couple of uh, small brackets just here. And here, just uh, remove them off the cover. Again, just uh, just stick the, the bolts back in place, see if you're losing them. Okay, I'm just about to remove the uh, auxiliary belt. That's a simple enough task. You'll see here, I've stuck a 3 8 drive ratchet in to the uh, tensioner. It's just a case of uh, pulling it anti-clockwise, and as you can see, it takes the tension off the belt. Okay, so I'll remove that next, and I'll get back to it. Okay, a wee tip, uh, being an amateur, I've uh, found one mistake I've made already. Um, maybe recommend that you slacken these bolts here on the pulley before you take the belt off. Maybe with the belt having a bit of tension on it, that will prevent it from, uh, from spinning. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is maybe use... Uh, oil filter strap on it, with another ratchet perhaps. We'll try that and see how we get on. Okay, that's all the pulleys removed now, and as far as I can see, that's everything out of the way, which is going to allow me to take the cam belt cover off. So, next step. Join you in a second. Okay, that's the uh, timing belt exposed now, along with pulleys. And the oil pump casing, which I'm also going to change. Now, so far I haven't found any specialist tools that I require. Apart from the uh, blocking kit here. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm currently doing the starter. Uh, and my head is minced. It's an absolute bollock. Uh, I can't, I've got the starter off. But now I'm trying to get my hand up into the opening 
to insert the, uh, the locking tool. Um, I can't really show you on the camera because I can barely see myself, so I don't think there's much chance of getting it on camera. But uh, I'm persevering, I'll get there and I'll join you in a second. Okay, when I started this job I didn't envisage a grinder being one of the tools I need, but uh, these uh, locking tools you get, um, I've been fighting with it for quite some time and I've decided that uh, the outside diameter of this piece does not fit in the hole. So that'll work with a grinder, a bit rough I know, but uh, needs must. It now fits, so I'm going to carry on with that and I'll get back to it. Okay, that's the uh, locking pins in, ready for the next stage. As I said before, I'm not a mechanic, I am mechanically minded. And I wanted to do this video so that the uh, your average DIY mechanic could, uh, could have a go, but uh, to be perfectly honest, it's, uh, what can I say, takes a bit of patience, put it that way. Patience I don't really have, but I'm getting there. So uh, I'll persevere, I'll carry on, and I'll keep you updated. Just about to uh, remove the belt at the moment. Um, just a wee bit concerned about uh, taking the, the crank uh, bolt off to get the pulley off because I need to change over the oil pump as well. But uh, right, that's the new oil pump casing on. Just a slight difference on it. Just this section here. This is the part that's known to break off with the, uh, with the tensioner. Now this is an absolute nightmare to get in and out. What I did find I had to do was, if you can see, just this section here. I just ground that down just a little bit to give me a bit of movement against here. So, get in there and I'll leave it just now and back to it tomorrow. Okay, morning folks. Uh, I'm just about to get started again on the Land Over Discovery 3 timing belt change. Um, I've had yesterday off due to the uh, poor weather outside. I couldn't, uh, couldn't really do anything. It was that bad. So uh, I'm going to get started again just now. There's not a lot more I can do at the moment as I'm waiting for a, a bolt to come home. It's a bolt I can source locally for the, the crank pulley. So uh, what I'm just going to do just now is I'm going to fit the belt loosely. I still have to put on uh, one of the uh, one of the pulleys onto here and the tensioner onto here, and then I'm going to fit the belt loosely. Uh, one of the other things I have to do, I'm going to have to slacken all these bolts on the on the pulleys. These two pulleys here just gives you about a a quarter turn, just to uh, not even a quarter turn, just to. Uh, Give you enough movement to uh, to seat the belt. I'll give you about a half a tooth. As you can see, I've still got the pins in place, locking pins, and they'll remain in there until I get the belt on and the crank pulley secure. As you can see, I've stuck the pulley back on at the moment with the original bolt. That's okay to hold it until I get the belt on, and then I'll have to wait till tomorrow until I get the new bolt before I torque it up. And uh, that's about it then, that's about as far as I can go. Okay, so that's the, uh, the nuts all slackened. As you can see, the pin goes through the pulley and it locks the cam independently. You get this much movement in the pulley itself, so that will allow you to seat your belt correctly. Okay, what I've done now is I've, uh, I've put the belt in situ. One of the recommendations is that you keep the the bolts on the pulley slack and rotate the pulley hard to the right, clockwise, on both of them. So when you start putting your belt in, you uh, you start by positioning it on the bottom pulley. Keep a bit of tension on it over the idler. Again, keeping the tension on it, make sure you get the teeth in position. On the uh, on the pulley camshaft pulley, and again work your way next to the next idler, keeping the tension on it, 
up over the second pulley and then down over your tensioner. Now you'll see, as I mentioned, I've got to have put a new bolt in the crankshaft pulley so what I've done here is I've just uh, put a little yellow mark there just to make sure that it doesn't move. So when I put the new bolt in I'll just have to make sure that that's lined up correctly. Okay, okay that's the timing belt on and as you can see here I've got, it all, I've got it all tensioned up so I've put a little mark on the pulley itself and on the back edge of the cover. Same on this side, just a little mark on the tooth of the, uh, of the pulley and just dead in line with it I've got a little wee mark again on the pulley. So that's three marks in place and that will allow me to turn the engine over when the time comes with a torque wrench and just to make sure that everything lines up. You can get your torque settings from a Haynes manual if you have such a thing and if in doubt there's always Facebook. It's very good for uh, speaking to people who have done the job before and they can help you out. Okay, leave it there just now. Okay folks, that's uh, the new belt on and the new bolt and the uh, crankshaft pulley. It is tightened up to the required torque but being an amateur I let's just say didn't feel it was tight enough so my usual I just went that little bit extra. So hopefully it will never shift again. Okay now it comes to the rebuild. I'll start uh, removing the uh, the pins and reinstate the starter and then I shall turn the engine over a couple of turns just to make sure that my marks line up again. Okay, okay folks that's me uh, I've just removed the uh, locking pins off the engine and the one down by the uh, flywheel and I've just given it full, two full revolutions and fingers crossed seems okay so far uh, all my marks have lined up again so uh, now I'll stick the starter in ok folks just a wee update um, as you can see that's the uh, plastic cover back on all the pulleys and I'm starting to put the hoses back into place as well and I'll get the belt on ok one thing I have done here, it's a wee tip, uh, I, I did start putting on the, the under trays after getting the starter in place but uh, I decided to leave this one off as I found when I was uh, was taking it apart I dropped a couple of spanners and they ended up getting stuck in the uh, in, in the under tray so if you remove that it just drops out the bottom which makes life a bit sad. Alright folks, that's everything back together and now for the time for the moment of truth now this video will either go viral because I've just blown it up or it'll be an awful lot of use to a lot of you guys that are planning on doing this yourself so just uh, I'll just leave the camera running here and keep your fingers crossed Happy chappy. Okay, that seems fine. The only warning light I'm getting is uh, low fluent, fluid or the coolant. So uh, I'll top that up. I'll sort this video out for YouTube. And the best of luck, folks. It's uh, not an easy job by any means, but as I said, I'm an amateur and I've managed it. So uh, go for it. Give yourself a fortune. Thank you.